Who are you with, sir? Carol Morley, Cairo Cannon, with Cannon and Morley Productions. I'm just and myself with going? my own productions. We're going to Dublin Island. What? Because Dreams of a Life is premiering there tomorrow. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm very excited. It'd be crazy to be back where we were filming it. And we'll see, see all the crew. Be lovely. Be really nice. <laughs> And I think that tonight was a roaring success. And that, um, what was tonight? Oh, tonight was the Irish premiere of Dreams of a Life at the IFI in Temple Bar and the Irish Film Institute. And we're just so delighted um, that it's here in Ireland. <laughs> so, Kyra, who are these weirdos? This is your unbelievable, indefatigable Irish crew. It's an actor in there, too. Oh, where? Oh, it's me. It's Lancia. What did I think of working on the film? I thought it was like working on a kind of a group project and that's what I really liked about it. And I love that about it. Tell everyone what you did on the film. I did the, I was a third AD on the Irish leg. As an AD you just get a call, you go, yeah, cool, I come do my thing, happy days. But I think as everybody's been saying, I think it was one of the first jobs I arrived on set and within, you, you know from working on many sets, from within, five or ten minutes of being there you know you knew people cared about this project and it was a very I mean like you usually kind of this and that and that but every, everybody was like oh have you read the script blah blah which thing I was like no and I go oh it's amazing it's brilliant blah blah and you usually go yeah yeah whatever uh, and people you know in the film game people say things but I honestly I felt it and I mean it was the first time I felt like I'm ah, not so like a big Bleh. but it's like everybody was pulling together it was low budget blah 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 everybody believed in yourself Everybody believed in the project. The story itself was was amazing. Like I, I had no idea walking on the set the first morning, going, I, I know. <laughs> it's like right, that's an actress. There's the set. I need to get her from there to there in as quick as possible time as I can. That's what I do. Make sure she gets a cup of tea. Make sure she's happy. Make sure my director's happy. That's what I do. But I mean, everybody kind of goes, oh yeah, it's a great story. And then they start telling me about the story. It wasn't actually until after the job that I actually read the script and kind of went. Wow, I'm really proud of her after working on that. No, especially after seeing it. I mean, as, as I said to a lot of people, it's, it's a very unique piece. It's like, I think a lot of people these days, and especially in the film game, look for a box to put something in. And I think there's a, from this piece, there's a new box after being created for a piece to be put in, you know? This is Leonie Prendergast, and she was the costume designer on Dreams of a Life. And she is amazing and wonderful. And she's going to, it is, we are celebrating the Irish premiere here of Dreams of a Life. So yeah. there has been a little bit of drink here yeah, somewhere. I <laughs> can't find it. Oh, there that? we go, there we oh, go. Oh, yeah, oh, God, it's, it's empty. Yeah. So well, this so is my beautiful yeah. assistant, Suzanne Kyo. You worked with Bonjour. me on the job. <laughs> Hello, Suzanne. Hello. 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 And I met Ky well, I did. No, I she did really. I did, to and I met. I met That's true. I met Cairo, and we just. Cairo, you were more like, how could we actually make this work? Because I know the finances were so tight. We just wanted to do it, and we didn't care how it was going to happen. And then we went over, and then we met the amazing Zoe. And I suppose it's that thing of when you when you costume a job. It's about making it as real as possible um, and not trying to put your mark on a job. It's just making it as real as possible. That's what I understand costume to be about. Um, and it's also a very sensitive story, a sensitive issue. You don't want to try and make it stylish in any way. But at the same time, because of the nature of this job, it was about making her as beautiful as you could possibly be. And because of that, it does become quite stylish. And then Zoe came in. We cried on our first fitting. I'm not going to say. Will I say it? We cried, didn't we? Yeah, we did cry. But not only did she cry, she also had her first fashion gown. That's the... <laughs> I was afraid to say it, but <laughs> Susanna said it. <laughs> 
one of the greatest. That was my first ever. Fashion. Oh, fashion gasm. I had a fashion gasm about five. Yeah. Any oh. girl? Yeah, great. Really great. <laughs> I'm figuring out what that is now. It was the rubber, the rubber dress. The rubber dress. I figured the it out. The rubber dress. The rubber dress. Second, the, boys. the, the second half of that word gave it away. Can I just I say something really quickly? Yeah. She no hates offense. Talking. No offense. <laughs> Boy, men. But I'm particularly proud to have worked on a film produced by a woman, directed by a woman, starring a woman. Because that doesn't happen very often. And in fact, it doesn't happen at all, <laughs> really. So. <coughs> I think it's happening more often. Go more women on set. <laughs> <laughs> what is dreams of a life in Ireland? Oh, oh I might put you on some the air. Oh, I could say four. Something that Baha. Something that Baha. That's dream. That's dream. Swimmy. Swimmy in a Baha. Swimmy in a Baha. And new dress. Uh, I'm James Mitchell. Um, I'm one of the producers of Dreams of a Life. I'm Cairo Cannon. I'm one of the producers of Dreams of a Life. How many were there? Uh, they're just, just the two of us. <laughs> I tell you, this is not what happens with Herzog. Actually, with Herzog, he completely ignored me. I mean, that, my performance, I mean, I was left to my own thing. So Inv Invincible was the movie, by the way. So, J James, what role did you play in the Herzog movie? Uh, I played a crucial, small role of the doctor, uh, in which I got to tell a small child that I was about to amputate his brother's leg. <laughs> the leg in question belonged to Yuko Ahola, at the time the strongest man in the world. How do you feel about Jesus of a life, James? Um, exhausted and very, very proud. I feel elated, numb, and absolutely delighted. How are you pleased with the reaction to the film, James? What's been your favourite reaction? Well, I, I haven't been following the tweets with quite the same dedication as some of our number. Um, but I, I have found that the reactions, very, very personal reactions, are quite overwhelming. I, I've never, in an awful lot of films that I've been connected with, I've never seen a reaction, um, such an intense personal reaction from people. What do you think of Zowie in the film, James? <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's quite early in the day <laughs> to be having this conversation, but I think Zowie is wonderful. I love her, and I was so glad to be sitting next to her last night. I haven't had that experience. I had to hold her hand during a few scenes, not because she needed it, but because I did. I think I'm great, Nate, as well. <laughs> Thank you. I had the most amazing phone call a minute ago from... Um, a really great friend and actress, Indra, and she uh, went to see the film last night and she called me and said, I've just been so profoundly moved by the film um, in so many different ways. One thing that she just said was bizarre, I'm sort of still a bit like <laughs> shaken from it, I sort of needed to process the phone call, is that she knew three of the people in the film. She used to go raving with Alton back in the day at the um, uh, Zenon. At the Zenon, wow. and she was just like, "I can't believe it. That was my crew, um, wow. and that was a scene." She said it was a real scene. 